Alright, greetings there Casio enthusiasts and G-Shock lovers. Today we're going to do a quick review of the GA140, which is an analog digital model similar in design and functionality to the GA100 and the GA110 series. Uh, some people call this watch the boombox watch, since apparently it takes some of its design cues from 1990s stereo components or portable music players. Uh, it's a fresh look on an, on an old take. Don't want to spend too much time on it today, but I did want to do a quick review and uh, check out its dial, its specs, and a couple other features that are uh, either misunderstood or, or underutilized. Um, it's a hefty G-Shock watch. It's about 51 millimeters in diameter, which is maybe a little bit too big for me. But uh, anyway, let's uh, give it a quick look and check it out. So this watch is definitely a beast. It's absolutely a G-Shock. It's thick, it's hefty, it's durable. Uh, it's got a lot going for it. Uh, let's give a quick look at the specs here. We've got uh, mineral glass on top there, nicely recessed from the bezel to protect it. Um, it's uh, magnetic resistant. It's got 200 meters water resistant. Obviously a resin uh, case and a resin band with a nice buckle there. Uh, definitely a thick, hefty band. Keep it on your wrist. Uh, it's got an LED light over at the nine o'clock position with an auto light switch. Uh, it's got world time, 29 time zones, uh, one one thousandth of a second stopwatch, which is nice. It's got a countdown timer and all the typical features you'll find in a, a regular uh, G-Shock watch. It measures in at 51.2 millimeters wide. Uh, lug to lug, it's 55 millimeters and it's 16.9 millimeters thick. Uh, you can see there's some nice knurling on the buttons on the side, which is good. Uh, easy to press pushers. Uh, battery life is approximately two years, and uh, the total weight of this watch is 72 grams. All right, it does come in a bunch of different variants. This one is uh, the black with red and orange. Uh, we've also got a black version with a negative display, uh, blue version, red and gray version, and a purple version. Let's do a quick run through of the features of this module, which is module 5612. All right, so from the home screen here, if you press the D button, it swaps between uh, the time and the date. And obviously in the bottom, you've got the day and the seconds. Uh, if we go through the mode button with uh, with the C button. Uh, first, you've got the stopwatch right off the bat. Uh, it's got either lap or split, which is nice, and we'll we'll check that out in a couple minutes. Uh, go through it again, and you've got the timer, a typical one-second uh, countdown timer. Hit it again, you've got the uh, world time zones. Once more, you've got the five alarms with uh, signal, alarm one, two, three, four, snooze and signal. And press it again, you're back at the home screen. So we've got a nice little animation up top here uh, in those LCD screens as you cycle through uh, the different portions of the module. We'll go through in a minute what those uh, LCD screens actually mean. Uh, and then down here, you've also got four different indicators. So if we switch on over to let's say alarm, and if we turn on the hourly signal, uh, you'll see that that uh, little LCD lights up. So interesting design, definitely very colorful. You've also got the speed indicator dial over here, which we're going to review in a minute. And one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have to reset the time every couple minutes, uh, simply because this watch does not have a way to move the hands out of the way which is kind of surprising for a watch that has uh, three different complications right on its face. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, so in order to set the time uh, from the home button, obviously you hold down the adjust button and you can see all the different items we can go through. You've got your home city right there. I'm in the East Coast. Uh, daylight savings time on or off, 12 or 24 hours, uh, seconds, hours, minutes, year, 
month, day, uh, the amount of time the light should stay on, either one seconds or three seconds, and we're back to the home screen. So uh, if I wanted to set the time, I would go to the minutes and step back just a few minutes. Maybe we can go back to 9.35. Kind of a bummer it doesn't have the ability to move the hands, honestly. Um, but what are you going to do? So there are a couple features of this module that I, I really like and I wish the other G-Shock models were, would have. One is the uh, world time zone. So. Like I said, I'm on the East Coast right now. World time here is showing LAX, Los Angeles. So if you press uh, B and then A at the same time, you can actually swap your local time with your world time. So uh, the watch will now adjust to LAX time, which means it has to go all the way around the dial. Uh, that's another thing that's kind of interesting about this watch is that the hands only move in one direction. So even though I'm swapping uh, my home cities, you know, it takes a good minute or so to uh, scoot all the way around. Uh, but that is a cool feature, especially for people who travel a lot. You can just tap A and B, and uh, it'll reset the watch for you to your, to your other time zone. So here we are in, uh, in West Coast time, and I'll go ahead and press it again, and it'll come back to, uh, to East Coast time. All right, one thing I really like about this stopwatch on this G-Shock is that it has both lap and split times, uh, something that not every G-Shock watch has. And you can see down on the LCD at the bottom there, when you press the A button, you swipe between lap and split. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, split time is essentially the overall time at any given point. So let's say you have a one mile track and you're doing a five mile race. You can use the split time uh, to get your cumulative time at any given waypoint. So maybe uh, when you run around the track once, you can press uh, A to get your split time of nine seconds there. And then if you press it again, you have another cumulative time of 19 seconds. Press it again to get the stopwatch going and then press it once more and you have a cumulative time of 26. And then we have lap time, which is the time in between splits. So if I press A, we'll go into to lap mode, start the stopwatch here, and then every time you press the A button, you get your lap. So the first lap might be seven seconds, and then let's assume you keep running around the track while the stopwatch is going in the background, you press it again. That lap is also seven seconds, and you can also see down at the bottom there, it counts your laps. So we're on the second lap right now. Press it again, and we're at eight seconds. So you can keep going on and on. I think there's, I think there's 10 laps maybe. I'll have to check on that. Uh, but nonetheless, um, really cool feature. Again, I wish most G-Shocks would have that. It's actually pretty cool. All right, so the last feature I wanted to go over on this uh, module or this dial is the speed indicator, and that's the complication over at three o'clock. So what this does is that it will calculate the speed of something per hour. Uh, so what you do is you set the distance in the watch, and then you start the stopwatch, and then after you stop the stopwatch, it will calculate the speed based on your distance divided by the time it took. So I've seen some confusion out there. People are, you know, might be trying to measure, you know, meters per second or feet per minute. But you have to keep in mind that this calculates something per hour, whether it's miles or kilometers. Uh, so let's go over really quickly how that's done. So we're going to head over to the stopwatch mode. And if you hold down the adjust button, uh, you can specify the distance. So let's assume we're tracking something over a mile. So we'll set that to one. So that means one mile. So let's give this a start here. We set the distance to one and I'll start the stopwatch right now. So let's assume we're in a car um, and you know normally you might go about 60 miles per hour. Uh, so if we have the distance set to one and we stop the stopwatch at 30 seconds, then we, we can assume that the car is going about 120 miles per hour. So let's see how that gets calculated out. So 26, 27, 28, 29, 
30 right there. So we stopped that at 30 seconds and you can see that the dial is pointing to about 20. And it might be a little tough to see, but there's a 100 bar over here. So what that's basically saying is that we're going 100 plus 20, 120 miles per hour. So these bars go all the way up from left to right from 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1,000. So that's telling us that we're going 120 miles per hour. So let me reset that. All right, so let's do that same test again, except we'll stop it at 15 seconds, and we'll see what we get back. So we still have a distance of one set on the stopwatch. I'll go ahead and start it. We'll count that down to 15 seconds, and we'll see what, uh, what the watch returns. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so now the watch is uh, pointing to, the dial's pointing at about uh, 40. And as you can see over here, the 200 block is now lit up. So 200 plus 40 is 240 miles per hour. So that's how it works. You have to just keep in mind that it, uh, it calculates things per hour. So it takes, takes the distance divided by the time and then it multiplies that by 3600 which is how many seconds you have uh, in an hour. So let's set that to 2. So let's assume we're tracking something uh, at 2 miles. And let me go ahead and start that. Alright, so if we're tracking something at two miles and we stop the watch at 15 seconds that should be a pretty high number so let's see if we can stop that here 15 alright there we go so now if we take a look at the at the display here we have 100, 200, 300, 400 plus 80 so we're going at uh, about 480 miles per hour so it took us 15 seconds to travel two miles so that's 480 miles per hour. So I've heard some people ask, what exactly does over mean on that complication? Well, that just means that you've exceeded the, um, the number of units uh, that this watch can track. So I think it's anything over, uh, over uh, 1,998 units per hour. So if we're still set at uh, a distance of two, and then we do a super quick you know, one second trip we're obviously going faster than 1998 miles per hour so it points to over let's quickly check out the case back here uh, we got a, a nice clasp and a, a really sturdy band uh, here we go with the screw down case back again this is the 5612 module I'll leave a link to the PDF file down below Again, it's got really nice pushers there, nice knurling on the pushers. Very colorful dial with a recessed crystal. So you definitely get a lot of good protection on this watch. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, we got a couple new watches coming up next week, uh, including a vintage one and another uh, really unique watch that we'll check out. Uh, so hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments down below. Leave a like. And uh, I'm going to drop in the promotional video for this watch uh, right here. Have a great day. We'll catch you later.